In a previous video, we created this file where we had multiple components in the same design file. Now, the first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to actually pull this file back up. So let's talk about how to do that. To get this up, this is part of the data panel. I actually have to click the data panel icon. Most of the time it just stays like this, but if I click it, sometimes we refer to it as the waffle, it'll pull up that data panel for us. And then I just need to kind of navigate. Most of the time I just hit the home button and then I can find all of the different projects and the folders I have. And as I go through those, I can find everything that I need. So in this case, it's going to be one of these two files. I'll just double click it and it'll open right up. Now that I have that close though, I can go ahead and just close the data panel. So let's talk about how to put these things together. What we're going to do is we're going to put some joints together in an assembly. So the first thing we have to do is figure out, all right, what part is everything going to kind of attach to here? In this case, it's going to be the axle. So I want to show you a couple of things here. If I click on that axle, and then I look over here on the left side, do you notice that it kind of underscores axle? Let's say I click on the pentagon here. Same thing, it underscores pentagon. If I click on the triangle, it underscores triangle. Everything in this particular assembly is going to attach to the dowel rod or the axle here. So I'm going to right click on it over here, use my right mouse button, and I'm going to select ground. Grounding is just what it sounds like. When it happens to you, you lose all your freedom, right? So everything is going to attach to this part. This part's no longer going to move. So if I drag that and move it, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. If I drag any other part, though, they're good to go. They can move. So next up, we'll go up here to the assemble area, and we're going to click Joint. All right. So we'll click Joint. Now uh, Several options are going to show up. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to just click. Let any of these parts can go first. It doesn't matter. You notice as I highlight it, see all these little white dots that kind of pop up? These are the different places where I can create joints. Right now, in this case, I want to find the center of the hole and click it. And then I'm going to come over here to the center of the axle and click it. And it's going to place it. All right. Now, you saw how it spun there. Over here, first thing we did was we put a position together. We locked a relationship in. That's what we did. Now we'll go to motion. The first type of constraint is a rigid constraint. And a rigid is basically like we take hot glue and we glue these things together or we weld them together. The next one is a revolute and that's the one that will make it spin. Then you have a slider and that will make it go back and forth. Then there's a cylindrical, I compare this to like a bolt and a nut. Then we have a pin slot joint. And a planar joint. And finally a ball joint. In this case, I'll just leave this one as rigid. And I'll hit OK. Next up, I'm going to follow that same kind of pattern now. So I'm going to go back up here to joint. Looks like two hinges, doesn't it? Click that, and then I'll click the next shape. It doesn't matter what order. So I'm going to click the center of the hole and the center of the axle. All right, you can see it places it, but that's overlapping the previous shape, isn't it? So I'll use this arrow and kind of just move it on back. Now, when I designed my parts, I made them so that each one was an inch thick. So if I rotate that, I can see there's a small gap there. What I can do is continue to move the arrow there until I get it to be negative one because this would be zero, right? That would be negative. I can also, if I, if I look real close, I can see I could type a negative one in there or I could come over here to my offsets and type a negative one. In this particular one, it's a Z. But I can also play around with the X and Y's. And that'll move it off of the axle, though. Before I hit OK, though, I want to go to Motion and, and select a, a Motion type here. For this one, I will use Revolute. I'll hit OK. I'm going to follow the same kind of procedure here. Let's rotate it just a little bit. Go back up to Joints, and I'll click the center of the triangle and the center of the axle again. Now, remember, it keeps the last type of motion 
for us. So I'm going to drag this back. And in this one, it looks like a negative 3 is going to be just about perfect. And so for negative 3, that looks fine. I could play around with the angle. Maybe I want it to be a 45. I could fiddle around with that as much as I want. I'll go to motion this time. This time I'll choose slider. And we'll hit OK. And then I have one more joint to make. So I'll take the center of that and the center of the axle again. And I'll go ahead and, and just kind of back it up in there. So this would be a negative 4. And I'll go ahead and change the motion type. This time I'll use a cylindrical. So that allows it to slide and go around. And I'll just hit OK. All right, so the the idea behind grounding the axle, and notice that little icon where it's got that little push pin that tells you that it's grounded. Now I can grab any of these parts and they'll move accordingly. Now remember, this, the rectangle one, was a, it was a rigid joint, so it's not going to move. This one, though, was a revolute, so it's going to spin. Our third one in was a slider, so it'll go back and forth like it's supposed to. If I continue to drag it, though, it's not, it's not going to turn because we didn't tell it to. Our last one was cylindrical, so it's not only going to turn, but it's also going to slide. All right, so this is just a basic overview of how to put in assembly constraints.